Do you want to know if voice rest is the best solution for your vocal issue? What does vocal rest really mean? How long should I be on vocal rest? How to rest vocal cords and will voice rest really heal my voice? In this video, I'll answer all of these questions and give you more vocal rest tips. So keep on watching. Hi, I'm Katarina, speech-language pathologist, and here on this channel I share practical tips about using your voice in a healthy way. So, if this is a topic that interests you, consider subscribing to this channel and hitting that bell notification icon so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I often hear voice users who are dealing with vocal issues say, I didn't speak for a week and my voice is still hoarse what should I do? The concept of vocal rest is widely misunderstood and there are many myths about voice rest and it's not your fault. Not, not a long time ago, absolutely no talking was recommended for any vocal issue, including laryngitis or vocal nodules. Rest your voice and you'll be fine. Well, absolute silence was enforced for a month or even more. Can you imagine not using your voice for such a long time? Absolutely no talking. It's very hard, especially when you have kids. But current research tells us that absolute silence may not be the best treatment option for many vocal issues and actually some form of a gentle, low impact vocal exercise may be a better solution for many voice clients. Absolute silence for prolonged periods of time can even lead to fear of using your voice or to weakness in some of the muscles. So first of all, what is vocal rest? There are two types of vocal rest, absolute and relative. So let's first talk about the absolute voice rest. Absolute voice rest means absolutely no talking or using your voice in any way. Absolute silence. And this includes whispering, humming, coughing or throat clearing or even playing some wind instruments or even lifting heavy objects or, or weight lifting as these activities require forceful vocal fold closure. Luckily, nowadays, absolute rest is recommended only for people after vocal surgery or people with very serious vocal injuries such as vocal hemorrhage. The goal of absolute voice rest is to allow the vibratory edges of the vocal folds heal properly to avoid permanent damage. If you are planning vocal surgery, your doctor or a voice therapist will prepare you for a successful period of absolute silence. And believe me, it's harder than you think. No phone, phone calls, no talking online or offline, no singing, no talking to your friends or family, no ordering food or drinks. This period tends to be relatively long, a, a week or even two in some cases, depending on the doctor's recommendations. Well, try to go without talking for a few days. It's really hard. Therefore, you will need at least a pen and paper to communicate your basic needs. Preferably, you want a talking device or text-to-speech apps or programs. It is a good idea to speak to your friends and family before your vocal surgery and warn them about your silence period. It is also practical to have a sign with you at all times that explains your silence. The period of absolute vocal rest can be used for mental practice. If you are a singer, you can rehearse mentally or you can study your music or texts that you need to memorize. Mental preparation with really full concentration strengthens brain pathways the same way as if you used your voice. If you are not a singer, this is a good time to read, watch TV and sleep. But as I said before, absolute vocal rest is recommended only in a rare circumstances. So hopefully that is not you. 
Relative vocal rest means a decreased vocal use, which may include less talking, singing, more vocal breaks and silent periods throughout the day, as well as planning your voice use. This should be combined with healthy vocal technique for voice use. The goal of relative rest is to avoid vocal injury and allow healing of the tissue of the vocal folds. Relative vocal rest is recommended for many voice problems, such as acute inflammation of the vocal folds, laryngitis due to a common cold or flu, uh, vocal fatigue, problems related to overuse and others. Relative vocal rest is usually combined with voice rehabilitation. For example, if you have been diagnosed with vocal nodules, silence will minimize forceful vocal fold closure, but the nodules will return if the underlying behaviors are not addressed in therapy. Vocal nodules will only resolve if you eliminate traumatic vocal behaviors and use better vocal technique. Relative vocal rest can last anywhere from two days to several months. Professional voice users with high vocal demands should use many strategies of relative vocal rest daily to preserve their voice for the most important vocal tasks. Here are three vocal rest tips to help you heal your voice. Tip number one, use your voice only when necessary. If you have laryngitis and you need to use your voice for an important meeting, speech or performance, minimize voice use in other situations. That may mean texting instead of making phone calls or it may mean avoiding loud environments where you need to raise your voice to be heard or it may mean delegating some vocal tasks to other people. Tip number two, gentle vocal exercises. It is recommended to warm up your voice gently before using it for any purpose. It's best done in the morning. Strophonation with low resistance levels, SOVT exercises, gentle sirens or humming are great warm-up exercises. Bring awareness to your voice and your body to have a successful day. Tip number three, avoid harmful vocal behaviors. Yelling, excessive coughing or throat clearing are obvious examples, but also talking in loud environments such as talking in the car, restaurants, airplanes can lead to increased breath pressure and therefore more stress put on the vocal folds. I have a checklist of such vocal behaviors. To make sure that you are avoiding them all, click this link and get your free checklist now. If you found this video helpful, click the like button and share it with your friends. In my next video, I will be sharing more tips on how to keep your voice healthy and happy. So stay tuned by clicking that subscribe button so that you get notified when a new video is out. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.